This is the original equation of Kepler's third law from 1619, which states that the square of the orbital period of planets is proportional to the cube of the orbital radius. This is the modified version by Isaac Newton from 1687 and is what we use today. It further defines a proportional relationship that was originally observed by Kepler by using the gravity constant and mass. Others have been able to define the mass of a planet in terms of the remaining elements, or the period of the planetary orbit in terms of the square root of the remaining elements, or even the radius of the planetary orbit in terms of the cube root of the remaining elements. But what is not being defined here is the dimension that the planetary orbit is in. Looking at the radius only, it appears that the planetary orbit is in dimension 3, to which we respond, yes, but which one, surface or volume? This is where we normally get the deer in the headlights look from those unfamiliar with dimensionology. So let's take a look. When we move all the dimensional terms to one side of the equation and the remainder of the terms to the other side, just like the other equations, we get this. As you can see, the left side of the equation is precisely the formula we use to calculate the three-dimensional surface of a three-sphere and is not the equation for the three-dimensional volume of a three-ball. That equation would be this, and it is not valid. Some may argue that planetary orbits are in fact in the volume of a three-ball and that the elliptical orbit is just a circular orbit being distorted by gravity. In this case, then, they would argue that we have three spatial dimensions, the x, y, and z axes, and one dimension of gravity. So what's the difference? Let's start with our x, y, z axis that allows us to assign a location to absolutely everywhere in our three-dimensional world. We'll lay this out in our typical fashion where the x-axis is the horizontal green line, the width, the y-axis is the vertical yellow line, the height, and the z-axis is the diagonal blue line, the depth. We can start to rotate the z-axis moving from a diagonal blue line down to a blue point, which represents the center and us looking straight down it from the front of your screen to the back. We can then create a three-dimensional experience by fixing our view down the z-axis, which we interpret as depth and then rotating anywhere around the remaining x and y axes. In all cases, the center point will always look the same to us. Not just the location, but also what the shape looks like, and we can imagine the center point is in three-dimensional space, rotating anywhere around our three axes, ultimately to return to our two-dimensional view. Let's add that information to a chart that a point looks the same when rotated anywhere along the x, y, or z axes and move on to a line. We'll start with the red line on the x-axis and rotate it around the z-axis. You can see that it's basically twirling like a baton. Rotating around the y-axis, a line will appear to reduce down to a point after 90 degrees and then appear to return to a line after 180 degrees. And lastly, if we rotate a line around the x-axis, the line will appear not to change at all and will look the same, just like what we saw with a point. So let's add all that information to our chart. Moving on to a red square, rotating around the z-axis makes the square appear to twirl, the same as a line does. However, rotating the square around either the x or the y-axis makes the square appear to reduce down to a line after 90 degrees and then return again to appear as a square after 180 degrees. That's a little odd that both axes appear to reduce a square down to a line, especially when we can now view the square from the side or the edge and also rotate it in our three dimensions. Doing just that, Rotating around the z-axis, the edge of a square will appear to twirl as expected. Rotating around the x-axis, the edge of the square will appear to expand to become a square after 90 degrees and then return to appear as a line after 180 degrees. No problem. However, rotating this side view of a square around the y-axis and removing the x-axis for clarity, that edge of the square will appear to elongate after a 45 degree rotation and then shrink back down to its original length after 90 degrees. What gives? Where did this strange effect come from? Referring back to our chart, we can fill in the additional information and note a pattern of a line appears to become a point, a square appears to become a line, and a cube then should appear to become a square. And sure enough, we can all imagine that if we look at a cube just right, we'll see only one face of it and it will appear as a square. Each of these examples are based on using traditional measurement. If we now switch to dimensional measurement and use spheres, the information becomes a little more telling and a little more complicated. The same as in traditional measurement, a point rotated along any axis in dimensional measurement will always appear as a point. Next, we get exactly the same results using dimensional measurement as we do with traditional measurement. That a line will appear to stay the same, twirl or reduce down to a point depending on which axis it's being rotated around. When we move up to dimension 2 and use a disk instead of using a square, 
things begin to change. First, a disk will appear to stay the same when rotated around the Z-axis. We got that one. Next, a disk will appear to reduce down to a line when rotated around the other two axes exactly the same as a square does. However, when viewing a disk from the side, things appear differently. The edge will appear to twirl when rotated around the Z-axis and will appear to return to a disk when rotated around the X-axis, but will appear to stay the same and not elongate when rotated around the Y-axis. That unusual effect of elongating does not occur in dimensional measurement until we start looking at rotating a three-sphere. Similar to a point, when we rotate a three-sphere around any of our three axes, X, Y, or Z, it will always appear as a sphere. However, the rotation needed to make a sphere appear to become a plane when rotated around an axis is unknown to us or unacknowledged at this time. We're looking at a simulation of this strange rotation around this unknown axis from a 65 degree angle just for clarity. Normally we would see this phenomenon from straight on and it would appear that whatever we're looking at is flattening. Flattening has been a controversial observation for centuries with numerous explanations offered from many professions such as optics and physics. And we at Dimensionology are now going to throw our hat into the ring with our simple explanation. We live in a three-dimensional surface world and not a three-dimensional volume world. And the appearance of flattening is simply the effect of rotating around the unacknowledged additional axis, which is native to a three-dimensional surface world and absent from a three-dimensional volume world. We'll have more on this strange axis in our next episode. This is Jeff Zabo for Dimensionology. Up next, the spherical octant. <laughs>